Okay, welcome everybody to course two, Rethinking Burnout and Maintaining Life Balance, where we're going to be talking about how we can apply the signs of behavior to our socially significant areas of our work life. My name is Abby Twyman from Action for a Peaceful World, and let's get started. Okay, so the first lesson uh, within this course series is making effective business decisions. And the three books that we are going to cover within throughout this course are Never Go With Your Gut by Gleb Sapersky, um, The Paradox of Organizational Change by Maria Malott, and then Thrive by Mark Smutney. And the, all of these books are about business, but just like um, businesses are comprised of systems, so are we. And so we can apply the same concepts to ourselves as we can to our business decisions. And ultimately they are all completely interlinked. So um, I'm excited to dive into this and really delve into the decisions that we can make and how we can make more effective decisions. So let's go ahead and talk about where we have been. So in course one, we were completely focused on developing and honing our psychological flexibility skills. And we learned about how most of the time we're in this automatic responding mode or default, default mode, mode network in which our brains and our bodies are constantly responding to the stimuli as they are coming in. So the things that are going on in our environment, the things that we see, hear, feel, um, smell, touch, all the things that we sense and perceive are being filtered and processed by our brain and we are responding to that information as it's coming in. And we generally respond in an automatic way or a default way, which has been kind of developed through evolution to be a, to be a very adaptive response. Because if we were to be if we were to be required to put all sorts of cognitive effort into every single decision that needed to be made throughout every single day, that would be very energy. Um, uh, tapping. So it would be a very resource, resource expensive task to engage in. And so um, our brains and our bodies have been designed to be very effective and very efficient and respond to things as they come along. And we, so we are generally just going with the flow. The information is coming in, our brain is processing it, we are responding. And most of the time that is okay, except um, except for when there are critical decisions that need to, need to be made. And so what generally happens as we're going with the flow, if we come across a decision that needs to be made that requires more attention to detail, if we continue along the pathway in that default mode network and that autom automatic responding, um, we generally will lose sight of the big picture and end up in a place where we are kind of lost in our decision making, or we've made a decision, we've responded too reflexively, we didn't attend to the right stimuli, we didn't, um, we didn't pay attention to the right information. And so we ended up making a decision that hurt us in the end. And as we also learned, we talked about the brain and how when we practice things over and over, those neural networks become so strong, so tightly linked from you know, this cue that we get and this response that we give, those things are so tightly interwoven, they're so tightly fused that we generally will fall into these patterns of responding that if we are not careful can lead to patterns of pain and suffering. So as we talked about psychological flexibility skills and honing and developing those skills, um, we talked about how we can be more aware of those patterns, those thoughts and those words and those actions, those patterns that we have uh, that have led to chronic pain or chronic suffering. We've learned to identify those and diffuse from the negative. So break apart those, those um, fused patterns of responding. 
we've learned to accept and understand what those things are teaching us. So accept and the pain for what it is, those experiences for what they are, and learn the lessons that those things can teach us. And we, as we, as we learned how to become more in the present and attend to the things that are right in front of us, that are most important, that will help us and guide our decision making, we started to develop the skills that we needed to, to break away from that conceptualized sense of self, the identifying with the way that other people think and feel about us or the way that we commonly think about ourselves um, and how we fit into the world. We learned how to break free of that and become more of our, and identify more with our ideal versions of ourselves, or our transcendent self. And that's not to say that this is something, you know, nebulous or ephemeral, this transcendent self. It is simply a clarifying our, of our value, identifying who we are deep down inside, who do we want to be as a person, and commit to action in order to transcend and overcome the status quo, move beyond the status quo, and truly live in accordance with our values, who we want to be, who and live a more fulfilling life. So that's where we've been. That is the framework. That is the that is the um, frame of reference under which we are coming into this next course. Where now, once now that we have learned how to identify those um, identify those pain points, diffuse from the negative. I clarify our values and commit to action. Now we really need to start delving into how we go about making the decisions about what we're going to do. Because it's just, it's not enough. It's not enough just to be aware of a problem. It's not enough just to um, identify and you know accept the pain, accept pain for what it is. If we don't have a clear guidance on how we're going to make decisions moving forward, it is very real. The risk is very real that we are going to make decisions that are going to be maladaptive in some way or are going to lead us right back to the problems that we're having in the, in the beginning that, that caused us to want to take the steps to create more peace in our lives. And so the lessons that we're going to learn and the books that we're going to read, the things that we're really going to dive into are going to help take us from where we are now. We've gained these skills, we're honing them, but we're not perfect yet because we're always a work in progress, but we're ready, we've made that pivot, we're ready to step forward, and now we need to make sure that the steps we are going to take are going to lead us in the direction and keep us on the path that we want to stick to. And so now we need to think about, we need to talk about where we're going with this information, okay? So our world is comprised of complex systems. We, are, we as individuals are complex systems. We live and we function with a, within a social system, within our family and our community. Our communities are part of a, of a larger system. And it keeps going and going from beyond there. And as you start to you know, think about and analyze the, how each system functions independently and how they work together interdependently, it can become very overwhelming. But, um, and cause us to really think that you know, there's, it's too big. This problem is too big, the system is too complex, there's really nothing that we can do to fix it, nothing that we can do to change it. But the reality is that that's not true. Change is always possible. As behavioral scientists, we've come to understand that you know, we are dynamic systems. There's nothing that is so static, so set in stone that, it's, that it is not amenable to change. But that is not to say that change is quick or easy. Um, but it is possible. So if it's worth it, um, then there's a way to think about how we're going to move forward and how we're going to change those systems 
but we need to understand how complex it is. So we are not relying on those quick one-off first gut reactions to a problem uh, because that is generally where we fall into traps. If we perceive that there's a problem in the system, right? Our system's out of whack. There's a loss of equilibrium. We need to do something to regain, um, regain that um, consistency and regain equilibrium and come back to this homeostasis, right? Where we're, you know, calm, open, centered, and engaged. Um, but a lot of times what we tend to do is respond reflexively. We have this gut reaction. We have a gut feeling. I think this is, you know, this is the problem and this is the response to it. And I'm just going to act on that. And unfortunately that comes from that place, that automatic um, responding place. And when we are responding in an automatic way, there are many times when we're missing out on critical, crucial information that will lead us to more effective decision-making in regard to um, how powerful that change is going to be and how strong the change is going to be and how maintainable the change is going to be over time. So, so we know we know that the world is comprised of systems. We know that change is possible. And we know that when we sense a system that is out of whack, when, we, when there's something going wrong and there's that cognitive dissonance, there's that discord within the system, we know that action needs to be taken to recalibrate. But we don't always know what is the best decision. And commonly, like I said, and like you've likely experienced in your own lives, those quick decisions that we make that it's, you know, that are um, most easily accessible to us are not necessarily the right decisions. Um, they might help in the short term, but they're not necessarily going to be the most adaptive or most um, appropriate actions to take to affect long-term change. So when we have critical decisions to make, we have to be aware um, of cognitive biases and understand what they are, where they come from, and how to prevent them. When we know that there are critical changes to make, if we're not considering the whole picture, if we're not considering the whole system, we might be making a change, a small change in one part of the system that will have a positive impact, but it won't necessarily be a long lasting, long term impact. So we need to also have a systems approach to our decision making. And then finally, when we're making critical, big major decisions in our lives, um, or uh, decisions that are going to affect a system that is comprised of more than just you, right? You're not the only person or the only um, cog in that, in that wheel. Um, we need to include everyone in those conversations. And so that is why the, I've designed the course this way, to really think about um, on, a, on a higher level the things that we need to do. So now that we've found ourselves in a centered place, we're open, we're centered, engaged, we're ready to move forward, we've pivoted towards our values and we're ready to take the steps forward. We know where we wanna go, right? And now we need to take the, make those steps, create those action plans and commit to action. But if we're not aware of our cognitive biases that are likely to influence our decision making, and if we're not thinking and approaching our problem solving from a systems approach, um, and we're not including everyone in the conversation, it's likely that the decisions that we make and the actions that we take, while they might have a short-term impact, it's not going to influence the change and we're going to end up, whether it's in a, a week, a month, a year, we're going to find ourselves right back in the place where we were to begin with. Um, and that's not where we wanna be, right? That's going to end up, we're, it's gonna end up feeling like a futile, um, thing that we've done and we are going to have a hard time, you know, wanting, wanting to make more changes. Um, so 
we're going to need to um, create a uh, create an understanding, learn the skills, learn the steps that you should be taking as you're making these decisions. So the way that we're going to kind of carry through this course is similar to, similarly to like what, what we did the last time. You know, there's the books that you'll be reading from and that I'll be teaching from. Um, and then I will be sharing my life experiences and then you'll be tying these these concepts into your life experiences so you can have that solid frame of reference for yourself that will help you and guide you during future decisions that you're making. So when you get the instruction components, you see things modeled, you're able to role play them. Those parts of the behavioral skills training model, bring it all together. So in your brain, in your body, in your, you know, in your core being, you have these skills to fall back on and to reference. It doesn't mean that at the end of this course that you're going to be a master in all of these skills. We know that skills don't develop like that, but you will have the core foundational knowledge you will have seen and seen and heard an example from somebody else as a model and you will have had some experience through the exercises applying it to your own um, you know reconceptualization of your own history so you can um, you know have that key and have that guide to help you with your future planning so what we're going to do is we're going to um, i'm going to ask you to think about and decide upon a major life decision within the past five years that you can use as your frame of reference. And through that, and this can be, and this can be a decision that turned out well or didn't go exactly as planned. Um, but it, but it will be a good, you know, it should be something that was a major life decision, something that you, um, that you had to take some big steps um, or, you know, it was a big turning point in your life. And so we're going to use this to do kind of a, what, a, you know, like a historical analysis to identify what were the things, you know, here's the model and here's what happened. What did I, you know, what from the model did I do well? And what didn't I do? And if I had done that, what would, have, what, thing, what would things have looked like? How would it have improved? How would it have been better? Um, so for my life decision, the, the major life decision within the, within the past five years, which I've talked about before, um, and we'll dive more into, deep, into more deeply now throughout this course, is my major life decision in 2016 to leave practice as a clinical behavior analyst in Arizona and move to Alaska to become an oyster farmer. Giant 180, huge life decision, um, critical um, you know, things that needed to be considered when making that decision. And so I'll use that as a frame of reference to talk about the things that you know, maybe I did well and the things that I didn't do well and the consequences of that. So for this first lesson, we are going to get into the first book, um, Never Go With Your Gut. And the, the three objectives for this, for this lesson are to um, define those critical steps and key questions to ask yourself when you're making important business or life decisions. Um, identify and really talk about those situations in which bad decisions are common and recommended strategies to prevent those common errors in judgment. And then um, finally, to identify errors in judgment that often result from reflexive behaviors associated with loss aversion. Okay, so those are the first, those are the three things that we're going to talk about and work to accomplish today. 